and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, nor shall they be lacking, says the Lord. That's in shouting ground right there, Brother Lord. That's in shouting ground right there, church family. And they keep saying, I will gather the remnant of my flock. Ain't you glad to know tonight that you're in the flock of the Lord? You're God's flock. You're God's children. You are sons and daughters of the Most High God. You got royal blood flowing through your veins. Amen. And you can't deny it. Praise God. It, the Bible said, Greater is he who is in you than he that is in this world. Hallelujah. When the Lord reached down and saved you, uh, he done something. Uh, hallelujah. He not only picked you up and turned you around, uh, but he took that crimson blood uh, and washed away that heart, uh, that sin stained heart, uh, and made the water of snow. Uh, and then he said, uh, he took that quill uh, up in heaven and he dipped it in the blood uh, and he wrote down in a book called the Lamb's Book of Life. Uh, amen. It's your name there today. A lot of people worry about it if they don't have a bottle of Coca-Cola. Who cares if my name's on a bottle of Coca-Cola? I want to know that it's in the Lamb's Book of Life. And there ain't no devil in hell who will make me know any other lies. Because I know I used to have a past, but my past, hallelujah, has been washed away. The Bible said that he has made me a son and he has made you a daughter of his. Praise God. And there's something going on in the land. Uh, I've been talking with other ministers and with Brother Chris and Brother Noah about this. And, and other ministers. Is there any ministers in the house tonight? We want to recognize you. Whether you're an evangelist, a uh, preacher, pastor, you are. Praise God. Let's give them a hand. Hallelujah. Praise God. Good to have you in my brother. Thank you, Lord. We are always the honor where honor is due. And so there's something going on in this land today. And it's been going on since the beginning. God's getting his true church. He's getting the remnant, the faithful, the redeemed, the ones who says that I will stand when nobody else is standing. I'm not just going to be a spectator on Sunday morning. I'm not just going to be a spectator on Sunday morning. I'm not just going to be a spectator on Wednesday night. But I want to be active in the army of the Lord. Yeah.
that will stand while the world and, and not just the world, but as the rest of the church. Woo. You don't want to hear me tonight. The rest of the church is going crazy. They got church unity, religiosity, but they ain't got Jesus. They declare they have Jesus, but do they really know him? He says, not everybody who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter to the kingdom, but only those that do the will of my Father. But there is a remnant that can say yes to Jesus and no to the enemy. Listen, you can know what you can to see him for a season. You gotta be like Moses and decide to rather suffer affliction with the children of God. There's too many people. Listen, it, 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 we don't need to draw a line between what's right and wrong. We can see with our own eyes who's holy and who's unholy. But what we need to draw a line and distinguish between the two in the church today is between the religious and the righteous. Between those who serve God and those that should put on a show. The remnant is not trying to put on a show. They're not trying to put on a presentation as my brother said last night. The only one they're aiming to please is the Lord Jesus. That's the only one that the remnant is aiming to please because we understand something. I'm not going to stand before you on judgment day. You're not going to stand before me on judgment day. Hallelujah. We will stand before the judge, the lamb who was slain. We will stand before him. And we will answer to him. So it's time. To, listen, the time is far spent. The night, the day is at hand. It's time to awake from your slumber. Awake from your sleep. Because we are closer now than when we first believed. The day of the Lord uh, is at hand. Uh, we got to quit playing church. Uh, quit keeping towing around the road. Uh, we got to get down to business. As the old timers used to say, uh, we got to get down to where the rubber meets the road. That's right. That's right. We got about two or three that's going to join us. Oh. Hallelujah. I said you better get down to business with God and quit playing games. Uh, and what's a but not anymore. Look, I said, not anymore. He said, I will gather the remnant of the flock out of all the countries where they have been driven, and I will bring them back to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and in Greece. I'm going to go ahead and prophesy over you tonight. I believe that you are part of the remnant of the Lord. I believe you are part of the people that God is Listen, this is what I love about this move that God is doing. That it don't matter what church you go to. I don't care if you go to a Baptist church. I don't care if you go to a Methodist church. I don't care if you go to the church of God. Church of God, of prophecy, assemblies of God. There ain't but one church. That's the football church. There is no Believer. 
Ezekiel said, Lord, you know that. You already know. He said, but I want you to speak it. I want you to open your mouth and prophesy, son of man. Prophesy. We, we believe wholeheartedly in what is called the fivefold ministry. What God has instituted for the church to equip the saints of the Lord. And we believe that everyone in this room, not just the preacher, not just the evangelist, not just the praise team, not just the musicians. But we believe if you have been born again, if you've been washed by the blood of the Lamb, we're not the only ones we call it on our life. On it. You've got callers. Ever look at your neighbor right now and tell them, hey, you've got a calling on your life. Are you going to answer God's call? Can you hear the call of God? You gotta pick it up. You gotta ask God. You gotta call him. You need to ask. And we gotta start speaking. And not just speaking because our words can either build up or they can tear down. They can either get you in trouble or they can be a blessing. The power of life and death is in your heart. But when you begin to prophesy, and not just speaking words out of the air, but Brother Bill, I say prophesy, I'm saying when you speak the words of the Lord, you take God at his word. He told Malachi, he said, try me, prove it. Go ahead, put me to the test and see that I will not open up the windows of heaven and I will pour out a blessing on you that you ain't even got room enough to receive. If you don't want that blessing, I'll take it. You let me know. Come on, Lord. That's he's pouring out blessings. He's pouring. There's blessings. I don't know how many do you know how many were saved last night, brother? Close to 10. 10 people. So that's 35 people. 35 people and six services. 35 people have been snatched out of hell and their names written down. And the Lamb of the Lord, that's something to praise God for. That's something to sound. That's something to roar about. That's something to hallelujah. If you can't praise God for nothing else, praise Him for saving Him. But I know there was over 45 the first few nights. And I know there's a few more coming this way. I'm going to go ahead and pop the side right now. Amen. We're about to see another harvest of souls that be the flurry and to the kingdom of God. We're about to see another manifestation of the Holy Ghost come down. Because the Bible said, when you have the truth, when you have the remnant, when you have the faithful who come together in one mind and one accord, that's the secret ingredient to getting in the presence of God. It's coming together in one mind, one accord, hallelujah, we're in one place. And like we said last night, just slide tight, act like you love one another. Tell your neighbor. Watch for my hands that go and fly. Because I will lift my hand. I will praise my God. I might get a little crazy, neighbor, but just go ahead. I don't mean to slap you if I do. If you get slapped, we'll pray for you. Hallelujah. I want to share something with you. My sister come over. She's over at the building front. Y'all know we've been we've been trying to raise the money to build a church. And we thank God for what he's doing in that. But we, we have met. Our first go. We met our first go.
we're going to holler for Shildy big enough to feed everybody. And then so, we're the one that you're going to bring somebody, and that, they're going to bring somebody, and we're going to have room enough to receive. Because God is spoken. And God cannot lie. And I know God has never failed us yet. And I don't believe he's about to start today. Hallelujah. He said they will be fruitful, and they will increase. And I will set up shepherds over them who will feed them. And they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, nor shall they be lacking, says the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Did you hear what he said? I will set up shepherds. I'm going to hush up now. I will set up shepherds over them who will feed them. I'm glad today that I have seen around this region, around this area, and I still see evangelists like these two men of God, not only an evangelist, but, but an apostle, a pastor, and an evangelist. He, he, he works all three roads, and those are probably more. Brother Noah as well. Listen, they go and operate all everywhere. But I'm thankful that there is shepherds that are still out there feeding the flock of God. That, because here's what we got. We got a bunch of sissy crap. Instead of pastors, instead of evangelists, we got a bunch of people that want to tickle ears. Instead of having the Holy Spirit, they got some moose in the spirit. Instead of the doctrines of God, they got doctrines of devil. And we're living in an end time generation where we got need some men and women of God to rise up in this hour. Praise the Lord. Let's worship God tonight. 